Hey guys, welcome back to Contest Prep University. I'm Joe Klimczewski with Adam Atkinson. We are in episode three, talking about all things disastrous when it comes to your GI system. And I want to move into uh, what I think is next after just that flatulence buildup, Adam, which is constipation and diarrhea, which sounds very antithetical. If you have one, it's kind of the opposite of the other, but they're really two sides of the same coin and they can become very intermittent. You could, you could just kind of vacillate from one to the other. But uh, we already talked about fiber being a, a big offender when it comes to, you know, distension and pain and flatulence. But you mentioned that that also can cause a lot of constipation. Some people think, hey, if I'm constipated, I need more and more and more fiber. But you are exactly right that that can often back you up. And it, it just kind of almost dries out your GI system. You, you, it does create a lot of water absorption initially. But then because it's just such a harsh uh, fiber form, it, it just ends up, you know, staying in the lower GI and reducing elimination. A lot of it's because of the, the flatulence that it's creating. Um, but specifically, I, th I'm not sure a lot of people consider their, their long-term habits. Um, you know, if a lot of times I'll ask people right away, is this something you've struggled with your whole life or is it just when you started dieting because now we have lower food volume? But do you have any kind of a checklist, Adam, that you go through as people start telling you about these dysfunctions? Yeah, definitely. Well, the first thing is what have they recently changed in their diet? And sometimes you will get clients who immediately start with us. I've seen this a lot with the rise in vegan dieting. And some people's GI, I don't want to hate on vegan dieting, but some people's GI system just doesn't handle the foods they're choosing very well because there can tend to be a high influx in fiber. So I saw a lot of new clients who wanted to make sure they were vegan and they just were selecting, you know, a lot of beans, a lot of lentils and things like that that were really gas forming. And you can get so much loose stool that then it's compacted and you end up with a really big problem. And a lot of people try to throw more fiber at it. And that's almost like hanging yourself from the noose because now that's the opposite of what you need. You more so need starch for some better stool formation. Absolutely. And that's just it. You know, you got to find that right balance of fiber. And it, and it comes from different sources. So sometimes you just need more soluble fiber, something that comes from fruit, uh, especially things that are kind of concentrated, like, like dried fruit. All the things that you hear not to do when you're dieting sometimes, are, are very much healthier for your GI system. And so you mentioned just starch in general because it forms a better bolus of stool. And so things like rice can be very, very good. If you don't have specifically, you know, Crohn's disease or celiac disease, and so you can consume bread products, you know, sometimes somebody who's having some, some either constipation or diarrhea, they need to back up and have white flour, sometimes a, a, a bagel, you know, not, not the whole grain, multi-grain, let's throw all this fiber back in it, as you said, but really the, the most simple thing, you have to almost induce constipation if you've got a problem with chronic diarrhea. And the reason I want to really key in on that for a second, Adam, is if you're having a lot of loose stools repetitively, you're going to start eroding the submucosal lining of the colon and even then the mucosal lining, and then you're going to develop ulcers. And you can end up in, in all kinds of places you don't want to be with a lifelong disability, literally. Um, you know, there are, there are people I know who have gone down that road with, with chronic inflammatory bowel disease who end up having a, a colectomy. And all of it was just preventable because of the food they were consuming. If they just had pumped the brakes and said, wait a second, this shouldn't be like this. I, I need to figure this out. You know, they, they could have, have resolved all of that. Yeah, for sure. We see a lot of people who don't add enough calories in post contests and they maybe diet on their own and they just lean towards massive amounts of vegetable fiber. And even though that sustains like weight loss for them, they're doing a lot of damage to their GI that way. The last thing I want to mention, guys, regarding constipation, diarrhea is the supplements are often the greatest issue. You know, branched chain aminos, high concentration of amino acids. Can, can induce diarrhea. And uh, sometimes even just a vitamin can do that. Uh, I, I've seen a couple people with just the particular brand of vitamin because these things are very concentrated. So uh, I, I guarantee you that if you have to stop everything for a week, you're, you're gonna live, you're not gonna lose all your muscle mass, you're still gonna be okay. And, and then you can start adding one thing in at a time. But if you're really getting into dire straits with your GI system, 
you got to figure it out quickly. And that's one of the best things to do when it comes to, you know, some of those offenders when it comes to supplements, you know, start with the food, but you really have to consider those as well. So I'll oh, go ahead. Adam. That's a good point. I had a client, I just had to take off all of her supplements and she was worried, am I going to lose my gains and my, and I said, honestly, you're more of a dire risk at continuing feeling the way you are. If you're not digesting food well, you're going to train poorly. You're going to feel bad while you're training with all that gas in your stomach. And, you know, we'll add things back slowly as we go. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about in the next episode. So stay tuned. We're going to get into the gut microbiome and the health and what that can mean for things like our, our gains. So we'll see you then.